Hi everyone, I'm Natalie from SoHungryHippie.com. Thank you for being here on this Friday Live Sesh. I'm going to get right into doing a demo for you. I'm going to be making a Japanese knot bag. There are lots of tutorials and free patterns online if you wish to do that. I have a specific pattern in my shop by Sewn Wyoming and that's what I'll be basing my tutorial on. Ramel is going to link the pattern and the fabrics I'm using. And in fact, I'm going to take this jacket off just so I have no restriction of movement. Okay, I do want to show you these incredibly cool fabrics that I'm using today. I have two of the kanji script fabrics. One is a light blue and one is a darker blue. So let me show you my example bag that I sewed up yesterday. This is the darker blue. And today on camera, I'll be sewing up the lighter blue one. Yay, hi, hi everyone. For my lining, I'm using this muslin. It has sort of this textured print. I really, not print, but um, I don't know. I guess it's the way they dyed it. And I just really, really love it. So I'll be using that. I don't have that one listed in the shop, but I can certainly get it in there if you want it. What were you going to say? Uh, you do have a question. Okay. Hi. Hi, Tamara. 64 today. Can you believe it? This is how the bag looks unknotted. You don't need any interfacings or anything. Uh, Evelyn, the pattern is in my shop. This is what it looks like, and you do have to download the pattern piece from their website. But I have a note in there, if you don't have a printer at home, I can print you a pattern piece and send it if you buy the pattern from my shop. I will show you guys, I did do a soft vinyl version with gold soft vinyl, and I put the pink mushroom print inside. And I also did a moon glow version. It's more challenging with a stiffer vinyl, so just know that before you get into it. And there are a couple of changes if you're going to do a vinyl version, and I will tell you when I get there. All right? All right, let's get into this. So I did not bring... Um, I wanted to make this sort of fast, so I already have my pattern pieces cut, but I'm going to walk you through what you actually have to do because it can be a little tricky. The pattern is, uh, I like a pattern that is concise and short, but some folks need a little bit more help. So that's why we're going to do a demo. Happy Friday, everyone. Yeah, they are trendy, aren't they? Okay, I'm going to go ahead. And can you get the door, please? Can you get the door, Ramel? Yep. yep. Somebody's here. Uh, first of all, you will place your fabric right sides together. Yeah. And so we have deliveries. You know what? I'm going to switch to the front front camera so that you guys might get a glimpse of our UPS guy. It must be a bunch of vinyl, eh? Yeah. Some yeah, sorry about the doorbell. Just keep the door open so we don't hear that constantly. Oh, Ramel. Off again. Sorry. <laughs> well, you know what? It is what it is. So you're going to take your pattern piece, and on one side, you have to cut one handle shorter than the other. What I'll do in the meantime while we're waiting here is I'll lay my fabrics right sides together on the work surface. So right now, the handles are the same size. And I'm just going to place them right sides together here. Let me just show you this real quick. So here they are. This is the lining. This is the exterior. And you take your pattern piece, and on one side there's a dotted line, and you fold it down. And we have to trim both layers on one side. 
I have a new cutting mat, so I'm getting used to how it feels here. And then you're going to do the same thing for the lining. Okay, there's that. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to sew across this top, the longer handle, on both the exterior and the lining. Oh, thank you. All right, here we go. Oh, here we go. Wow, thank you. Oh my gosh. Awesome. Yeah, you should be mic'd up, Ramel. Nobody can hear you. <laughs> Don't you know? It is nice to How's get new now? stuff in. It's awesome. It feels like Christmas. Yes. And we're so appreciative to Kevin for bringing it in for us. It's so nice. Okay, so I'm just going to pause here for a second. He's got just a couple more. I wish he could hear you guys say, thanks, Kevin. Thank you so much. It's awesome. This helps me out. It's just, instead of having to put it in your guys' porch and stuff. Oh, yeah. And then it's already here. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> really appreciate you. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Yeah, you too. And then I get, I get a signature just because it's like I'm eating you on the road. Got it? Yeah. All good. Thanks. Have a good weekend. All right, awesome. Now we can proceed. <laughs> okay, so we have sewn across that, that, look, at, listen to me, geez, the long handle. Now what we're going to do, I'm just going to review this really quick. I've sewn, I need to put on my spectacles too. Yeah, so we are layering, we're going to open these up, lay them flat. You can just kind of press this down to one side for the moment. Right sides to get. Yeah. <laughs> what about Ramel? <laughs> are you feeling? Are you feeling neglected, Ramel? No, it's all. It's He deserves it. He does deserve it. He's awesome. All right. I'm just gonna pin these in place for the moment, or clip them in place. I don't get too worried about pressing everything really perfectly at this stage because we have a lot to do in the meantime. We flip this through the long handle. It's like all kinds of, I don't know how somebody thought of this, the way it's constructed, but here we are. So on your pattern, if you have, if you get the pattern, I've already shipped some out, so I know some of you have it. There is a diagram, number two, that shows you where we're going to be sewing now. Don't go crazy pinning these layers together because this is like temporary. This is not going to stay this way for long. Okay, let me show you. This is how I have mine clipped. I always orient it just like the pattern shows me because otherwise I might get confused. And let me move this out of the way. Okay, go ahead. Is it back quarter friendly? Um, no. You're going to need a little bit more than a fat quarter. Unless you do the small size. Actually, the small size you could do with a fat quarter, but not the size I'm doing here, which I think is already pretty small, and this is the large. <laughs> so, but then again, I'm a fan of big bags. All right, so right now we are going to sew the entire loop that U shape there. We're going to sew from here to here, and then we're going to sew from about here up and stop, and from 
here, up, and stop. And there's a reason to leave a gap in these two sections, okay? So, here we go. I'm going to start on the U because that is the biggest. Oh, sorry. Sorry about that, you guys. I thought I was on the front camera. You can use whatever kind of thread you want on this if you're using quilting cotton. I'm still using my Guterman All Purpose because I basically keep it in my machine indefinitely. I do have my Teflon foot on just because I've told you guys a lot of times I just keep it there. I sew so much vinyl. It'll sew just like a regular foot if you're working with cotton. Now here's this part. I'm going to move my clip. This is a nice palette cleanser for in between projects. It's so fast. You could totally bust your, your stash up making a bunch of these bags. It'd probably be a really inexpensive item to have in a craft show because you're not using interfacing. And once you make one, you're going to get so fast. Okay, so now I'm going to leave a little bit of a gap on this short handle. I'm going to start a little lower down. And I'm just sewing to this outer curve. All right. And then I'm going to do the same on this side. Should I turn my light off or is that okay? Oh, no, okay. Let me check to see where else I need to, to uh, sew. I usually lay it here and then I reference my diagram. I love a diagram. Okay, so I have to sew from here to here now. So I'm just going to start down here. Oh yeah, what's up, Tamara? She, she loves the stickers. Would you, would love all the sewing machine stickers. Can you get them in your shop in a pack? Absolutely. Um, Amy of Tansy Designs made a lot of the ones on my machine, so I will tell her that we need those in a pack for sure. I think she might have brought them over here. I just need to get them listed, so. Thanks for that reminder. Okay, so now we have got the bag sewn. I'm going to orient it just like in the pattern and check everything. Yes, I've got everything there. I'm going to reference this. Um, cutting the, the part one portion is quite, it's a lot, it's six steps, but it's really short. So now we're already in the assembly portion. So layer and pin, we already did that. Sometimes I do a little check mark on the pattern when I'm done with a step. It keeps me in place. Right now, if you wanted to, you can trim down your, cur your seam allowance a little bit. What I do when it's this kind of a curve, I just snip it. I'm just going to sit there. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Ramal. Tell me if I need to move. So I use shorter scissors for this step. That portion I could probably trim down a bit. And we're only doing these curves because it's really important on curves that you allow the fabric to bend and ease. And this is a concave curve, so we snip. On a convex, you would do a notch because then it can spread. I hope I said concave and convex, right? Sometimes I get nervous. Okay, this is too big of a rotary cutter to trim that down. I'm not going to worry about it. It'll be fine after a pressing. So that's all we have sewn. You can back, back out. Oh, no, please. Thanks. So now what we're going to do is turn the bag through this long handle. Remove your pins or clips and get yourself a safety pin. And these, these edges are not sewn up. So what you want to do, 
I'm going to pin right about here. My safety pin is really big, but I like using it because it's easier for me to grab. So I'm going to come through here and we just treat this like you would a tube or a scrunchie. If you've watched my scrunchie tutorial, this is how we turn the scrunchies. Same thing here. So we bring it all the way down and then flip this up and we pull it gently through. Don't be rammy here, just gently pull and ease. There we go. And now it's pulled through. Remove your pin and ease it through the rest of the way. It's so cool. All right, there it is. Now for the other handle, we, because it's short, we can just flip that with our fingers. So I just kind of come in like this and flip it through. You'll have one side that's open, that's on purpose, and one side that's closed. Same for this end. One side is still open and one side is sewn shut. If you need to, because I had to do this my first time through, don't feel bad if you sewed both sides, but do come in with your scalpel and unpick a few stitches on the matching sides for each end because it will make this next part much, much easier. Okay, so now we've got two short handles and we're going to sew the short handles together. The long one is already together. So this is what it's looking like so far. Don't worry yet. I know it looks like it needs to be pressed, but don't worry yet. Take your short handle, you know that open edge. That's open so that we can match. Maybe zoom in, Ramel. So we can match the closed edge and sew this together more easily. So open edge is there so we can match. You're not doing anything with that open side. That's just so we can take the closed sides and match them right here. And definitely use pins or clips to hold this together because it can be a little fiddly. So I will put a clip here. I'm matching those seams. I'll nest the best I can. This side, I think I need a little bit more give, maybe. No, I can do it. I can do it. I'm going to start over here. It's almost like you need three hands to do this part. I'm going to start over here, and we're going to sew all the way across that edge, and that's going to close the short handle. Okay, just do the best you can. Make it work here. If you need to unpick a little bit more, do it. Anything to help you, because we we're going to close that open edge easily. Don't worry about that. All right. I'm going to place this under my foot before I let go. I'm going to grab my threads, because this machine will sometimes come unthreaded. And then I just kind of ease it through a little bit at a time. I'm going to stop with my needle down. I have to sort of adjust this. And keep flipping it. This is the hardest part. And it's not hard once you see we're already done. Once you get it, you get it. That's all it is. You can trim this if you want. Let's go back over here. I'll trim that a bit. Okay, so now I'm just going to pull, and there's the short handle. So you've got this open edge still, right? So we're just going to base stitch that close, but first I'm going to press it. I've got two wool mats here, so it's not touching my ironing. My No, I don't think you need a zoom. I'm just going to press it so it behaves a little bit. And now this whole open side that we had, I'm just going to base stitch. That means a really big stitch. And that comes out later. Now remember, I'm using white thread on purpose because I want, oops, 
There I go talking again. I want you to see what I'm doing. You'll be using a dark thread or a matching thread to your fabric. That will come out in our very last step. So use a big stitch. I'll be using my scalpel to get those first few tighter stitches out. All right, we're almost there. Now we're going to take the lining right side together and the exteriors right sides together. You kind of have to tuck under those handles inside a bit to play with this. I do have another question. Oh, sure, go ahead. Canvas. Yeah. Would your canvas fabrics in your shop work for the exterior of this bag? Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> absolutely. I love it because uh, canvas, like it'll have a little bit more structure, but it'll still be very easy to sew. And the beauty about this is you're not going to be using interfacing, so it, uh, it just, I don't know, it takes some, some prep work out for you, which is a little nice sometimes. And sometimes when I'm working on a project that is taking me a while, I like to have a little project in between to just kind of keep my sewing interest up, if you know what I mean. It's sort of like wine tasters, I guess, sipping a bunch of wine and they need, I don't know, like coffee beans in between to cleanse their palate, start fresh, make sure they can still taste all the notes. I don't know what I'm talking about. You had me a coffee. Huh? You had me at coffee. I had you at coffee? That's yeah. funny. Okay, so now we've got this and we're almost there. All right. What we're going to do is sew these together, but we'll leave a little space in the bottom of the lining, as you would expect, so we can turn the bag out through the lining. Okay? So I'll start here and I'll be going all the way around and stop here and leave a gap. Did I run out of bobbin? Oh no. Tell me it, it ain't so. Oh, Ramel. Uh. I ran out of bobbin. Oh my. I cannot seriously believe this. I'm usually so ready, and I usually have a bobbin here. It looks like you and Michelle were having a good time yesterday. Obviously, having such a good time that I didn't check my bobbin. Let me see if I have one. Well, I guess we'll be winding a bobbin on camera. I remember how to do it. I have to unthread this machine. I take it through this. And then I put it up through the bobbin hole. Dear Lord, I'm sorry. And I put it on here and then move my bobbin over. I always wind my thread up a bit so I'm not wasting a bunch of thread. Okay, and then on this machine, I have to disengage the, the uh, needle, and then I press my pedal. I'm going to take off my shoe, and I have to hold this thread as it gets started. Oops. There it goes. Peace and love. I got it. I was really sweating for a minute there. A lot of times I wind my bobbins on the Sidewinder bobbin machine, so sometimes I forget how to do it. I do have a tutorial on my website on YouTube how to wind your bobbin on the Janome machine that I have because I always forget. Is this? Yep, it's still good. I'm just going to load this baby up so this doesn't happen again. We need your music now, Ramel. All right, looks good. <sighs> Thank you for bearing with me. I trim that top thread because sometimes it'll get 
caught in the bobbin case. It's just the things you learn. Make sure your bobbin is going in the right way. It, this one is a Bernina, so it goes in the opposite way of my Juki machine. And then I have to thread the machine, which is different than my other machines. Re-engage the needle. And I don't know about you guys, but I can never, well, this one doesn't have a self-threader, but I'm really bad at making self-threaders work. So I just usually thread it with my own eyes. Anyone else have that issue? Sometimes I'll even call Ramel over, can you thread this? Okay, here we go, we're back in business. You made that look so easy. Well, it is easy, except it's not easy on camera when you <laughs> think you're good and, oh well, who cares? Such is life. All right. Oh, and I got to bring my stitch length back down. I'm going to use a three mil. That's often what I use on stuff like this. And when you get to these corners on the side seams, just make sure you're getting, you're catching all layers. Yes. Are you going to do the machine review? Oh, thank you. Yeah. I did. I did. Yeah. I'm just going to take off my shoes because I think it's throwing me a little bit. How's that? Yeah, it's perfect. And maybe, I just want to see what that looks like. Is that too dark? No, that looks good. Okay. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah. All right, so now we are going to flip this bag out through the opening. If you want to snip your curves to make it even better, you can totally do that. I won't waste my, your time right now doing that, but that's what you can do. It'll give it a nice, beautiful curve. Sorry, what? That, that oh, it did? Yeah. Oh my gosh, look at that. So at this point, we need to pull our lining out and close the opening. So I just tuck it under. You could hand stitch this if you want to, but you know I'm not going to. I would, however, change my thread so people can't just see it as they are using the bag. Although tucked down inside. You probably want it anyways. Snip your threads. And then we're going to put it inside and give it a press. I like to run my fingers all the way around the bag. Make sure there's no holes. Make sure everything is lining up. Sometimes you'll have to adjust these handles a bit so they're sitting right. And then she does say in her pattern you can top stitch around the opening, the handles, the opening, all of that. I don't, I don't think I'm going to because I really, I think it looks great as is. And with a good press, it won't need it. I am, however, going to remove those base stitches. Oh, oh, that's why you want to top stitch it, because the basting stitches are holding that short handle together. That's why. So 
right here, remember I have my base stitches. Do you want to zoom in a little bit, Ramal? Mm -hmm. So this is the area that I base stitched earlier. And so what I would do is I'll take my scalpel and remove those, pull them out. And that's why you want to top stitch around at least this part. And in the pattern, she has you top stitch around that part, the opposite on the long handle, as well as this part. Okay? And that's all there is to it. So I will be top stitching that later. I hope you found that easy enough. The way you use this is you open the short handle and tuck the long handle through it, and then the long handle goes on your wrist. And the small size, where did I put that pattern? This, this is the large size. So for this one, you, I, I cut half a yard. I did have some extra fabric, but it is too big for a fat quarter. But the small size, I think you'd be safe. Okay? Any questions on that, Ramel? Uh, no. Okay. So the only changes that you'll do if you want to make a vinyl, and I recommend soft vinyl, really, because the, the Moon Glow, while it was doable, it was harder to turn right sides out. So I'll just say the soft vinyl is like fabric, and it'll be very easy for you. The only change I did is on the um, short handle construction. Instead of doing it the way she shows in the pattern, I ended up sewing up both sides completely and then tucking under a quarter inch on the short end. So on this end, I tucked under and then sewed them together. So quite simple. A fun little scrap buster. All right, I think that's it for that demo. That was short, huh? Mm -hmm. Have a question? Will you make kits for this pattern? Well, I could. If you guys want a kit, let me know. Otherwise, I do have this fabric in the shop if you wanted to get half yards. Do it now, because maybe that is a good idea, just doing a kit. However, it's just fabric in the pattern, so... Um, you know, not a, no hardware needed. How nice once in a while to have a pattern like that. Good idea, Michelle. Thanks. All right. Ramel, do we have a winner from last week? We sure do. We pick our winners from the previous week's attendance, and it is open worldwide. And uh, we appreciate you watching the show. So, Anne, you're the winner. Please email me, natalie at sohungryhippie.com, and we'll get your prize to you. Let's see. Oh, I wanted to remind you guys, in case you missed it, Michelle Graham and I did this live sew yesterday. This is the Comet case. It's a free tutorial pattern on my website. And I did an all vinyl version. Michelle did it the way the tutorial shows with the fabric section at the top. So if you haven't seen that video, we had a great time, and we sewed these up in under 30 minutes. So it was so fun. It's on my YouTube channel as well as Michelle's, Michelle Graham, her YouTube channel. So check it out. I did use color stripes for my zipper, which I love. Those are back in stock. And purple glitter vinyl for mine. I think Michelle used glitter vinyl. Didn't she? Glitter Stars vinyl? Oh my gosh, Michelle, which one did you use? Because yours was really pretty too. And to a pink fabric on her topping. So. Penny is asking, do you sell jelly vinyl? But it's coming. Yeah, jelly vinyl is on the way. And that's really just <coughs> a term for transparent vinyl, which we have quite a bit of. I'm calling jelly vinyl a, a vinyl that is frosty. So you can. What, um, That's the thing. People are asking for it. Yeah, pre-order it. It's ready and available to be ordered on the website. And we have a stack about this big. We will fill those orders first, a stack of paper for those pre-orders first. We'll be filling those. It might be behind me right now. I haven't opened these boxes yet. So it's shipped. It's Look. coming in. Look. I'm not emailing everyone individually. Sorry. Uh-uh. <laughs> Open a box. 
<laughs> open a box. Well, maybe I could. Do you have a knife? You want to grab me a Uline knife? Our orders, I always get these free pocket knives when I place our box orders. And so now we have 20 million pocket knives, but I love them. I'll, order, I'll open one of these for you, sure. You Great idea, Donna. You feel safer when you have many of those around, right? Yes, I do feel safer that way. You know what? I'm thinking that these are not jelly. I'm thinking these are, just because I can lift it easily, I bet it's more soft vinyl. Thank you. But let's see. Ha, ha, ha. Yep, more soft vinyl. So if you were waiting, we had quite a bit of pre-orders for the soft vinyl. It is here. Let me just, yeah, I think that one's the same. It's pretty. Oh, this is a new color of okay. soft vinyl, brand new, brand new. I had them make it for me. Oh, wait for uh, next Yeah, I think I should probably wait. I'll just show them the... Uh, no, you're right. Let's wait. Let's wait. It's not. I want, I want you guys to be excited and anticipation. Yeah, this is... Do we have a different... Maybe this one. This one has a different number on it. Nope, that's still soft. I'm searching. I'm searching. Let's see here, maybe this one. Nope. Well, it is on the way, okay? The jelly vinyl, go look at it on my website. We have all kinds of colors. We have like a cyan blue, a chartreuse, two shades of pink, I believe, a, a lavender, or maybe it's two shades of purple. We have a gumdrop purple and a lavender, and I don't know, something else. I forget. <laughs> it is like Christmas dye. <laughs> I love that. I love it. Oh, you guys, thank you so much for being here. As soon as that jelly gets in, I will go live. You know it. Maybe even as Kevin is hauling them in, I'll be like, Stop <laughs> and start opening it right away. Um, so turn on those ringers for notifications when I go live because that's, that's the way you'll see it first. All right? All right. Thank you again for being here, and have a great weekend. Have some time to sew for yourself. See you next week. Mm -hmm.